Hey, welcome everybody to the Simpit Academy. Today we continue looking at how to operate the F15E Strike Eagle in terms of navigation, which is very important. So we're going to look at different kinds of airspeeds and coordinates. There are different use and then what is BRAA bra and navigation aids like HSI, TSD, HUD, UFC, ADI and we look at sequence, po sequence points all right all these types and the next video we will look at other things like INS, Tekken and ILS. So starting with air speeds. So sometimes it can be confusing. There are different kinds of air speed used and displayed. Okay. KIAS, which means indicated basically what you see in the gauge, right? And then calibrated KCAS will correct for instrument errors and position error, probably INS. And then KTAS, true speed, all right? And ground speed. So this one is underlined, calibrated is what is usually used. Next, coordinates, mainly two types, uh, lat long, latitude, longitude, and MGRS, also called UTM. So these are interchange uh, often. Sometimes a system uses one, sometimes the, the map or the game, you know, says another. So All right, so the you have MGRS, you have this like a uh, grid zone, and then another identifier. This is a long one, right? This is the the grid zone, and then the identifier, and then um a pair of numbers. Okay. So, it's always easting and then northern as opposed to let long um, north south and then east west so it can be a bit confusing so okay you see like different length right this is up to five digits pair this is very precise normally you are looking at this Okay, um, six numbers or eight numbers. Okay, so like I said, um, if you can find one or the other, if you can find MGRS, then look for the other. Sometimes, like, um, the people giving you direction might be using one, so you need to know how to change. So in like JTAG, right? They give you MGRS. So in the Caucasus map, um, it's only this, okay? Georgia um, and Russia. So we are not doing the whole Europe or Asia. So 37T and 38T, all right? And it kind of cuts in the middle. Um, of the of one so it's like splits in the in between so it's kind of weird so this is uh, 100 km squared so zooming in zooming in further we look at gg um, km so this one split half okay 
continues to split down. And then here you have um, within GG, right? This is GG and subdivided many times. You do you have 23, 24, 25 up, and then 23, 33, 43. So this one happens to be 33. Okay, so Kobaletti GG 33, right? Here is the nearby. So let's say the target is this FU here. So we zoom in further. Okay, 3, 2, 4. So 3, roughly here, 2, 4. And then 3, 6, 2. So 30, 35, 36. Okay, so he's talking about this um, FU here. Okay, so this gives you an idea of coordinates, understanding. So in F10 map, we have um, the default, right? And you use Alt Y to keep changing. So the default decimals let long, and then the traditional let long in in degrees, minutes, etc. And then you Alt Y again, it becomes MGRS. Okay. Then you toggle again, it goes back here. All right. So sometimes you need to know how to change. So what is bra? So this is bearing range altitude aspect, normally given to you by say AOX, right? Um, or whoever is giving you some kind of direction. It's not just bearing and range. It also gives you the altitude um, and the aspect. So the first three is um, easy to understand. Now, what is aspect? Aspect is the enemy um, coming towards you, he will be called out hard, right? If it's going like diagonal, he's flanking. Then if it's really going sideways, 90 degrees, okay, then he's beaming, right? Then the friendly, you know, uh, vice, the opposite. Sideways is notching and then going forward, but at an angle is cranking, stuff like that. So just understand, so you have an idea um, which direction quickly the reference airplane is moving. Okay, navigation aids. We have five here: the HUD, the UFC, the ADI, TSD, and HSI. So, I would say this is the easiest to understand. Seeing a moving map, right? UFC lets you enter a lot of numbers and alphabets. Then the HUD gives you some visual reference as well, and HSI compass also very useful. This ADI mostly mirror it, the heart uh, in terms of sky and the earth and you know, artificial horizon and some stirring. So starting with TSD, we have all these circles, uh, stirring points. Starting with this one, the base, right? One, two, three, we are going this way, counterclockwise. So this is the ownership th that is your plane and okay this this is all stirring points we will also normally if you are um, attacking you will have a target point and before it an ip initial point and then there are many other points all these are called sequence points which we will look at in more detail so in the in the air to air um, radar, okay, a, a stirring point is shown as a triangle. And then in air to ground radar, stirring point is shown as a circle. Okay, also with a number, still point uh, or waypoint. All still points are waypoints. It's just which one you are actively steering to. So HSI, you have the 
non-colored one on the MPD and this is the MPCD which is makes it easier to read so basically three things to take note of the stirring the normal stirring okay which is shown here and the command back okay on your heart as well basically where wherever you are trying to go to this is the aircraft this is where you are flying towards right but if you have a selected steer point like this one here okay in red all the steer points are circled red so if you want to go to this one then the command bug tells you you have to turn here from here to reach this steer point now the other one is if you are trying to use the hsi to go to a particular tekken so for this tekken 12x uh it's in this direction and this is the tekken symbol if you are within range okay um then this one will appear if it's too far away obviously you're not going to see it okay then this third one the ground track marker this one is basically wing correction um to help you steer okay you enter the course based on the crosswind how many knots whatever and it will affect the command bug to stir with wind correction to your destination okay so here at the hut we have the steer point okay and this is the command bug that i was talking about this is where you are, your aircraft is heading but to go to this steel point you have to turn here okay um all right so the ufc ufc is also a navigation aid in terms of like which steel point for example you want to go to so here if you want to go by default is one right let's say you move to something else you want to go back to one okay you type one and then shift for all the alphabets shift one again for one a then you press and it goes here if you want to go to stirring point four then you press like four shift one basically four a then press all right if you when you press this um it will show you the bearing the range and let long or utm whatever the coordinates to more more information is there so adi it doesn't show you stirring q whatever um but it shows you your heading get it here okay like um two three eight or something and then you want to command bug ask you to go here okay here is where you should be um flying towards right the command bug as shown here so now sequence points we talk about it so mostly from the base starting from the base you have a lot of steer points until the end in between you if you have a target point then the right before it the initial point asking you to prepare okay so here's the base now um you have reference points okay uh in point referencing a steel point um this one referencing an IP um, and an offset point referencing your target point so I'm not exactly sure when you need to create all these reference points right most of the time you're using this and quite often you use IP and target together as a pair and definitely you have to fly back to base now bullseye um, in the map you use one each time there can be up to 10 different ones and that is 
something only known to you and your buddies, right? So if somebody intercept your communication, um, and you guys navigate by bullseye reference, they wouldn't know where is the bullseye, okay? And then mark points, obviously, to mark and come back to it, to bomb or just to check out things, whatever. Mark points is quite useful. All right, so more about bullseye. So bullseye, it's to um, the true north, okay? So, and then you have bearings for bullseye and airports, okay? They are fixed. So heading is for aircrafts because it's moving. That is where, like this one, okay? Where is it headed? Is it headed down, left, right, up, you know, north, south, east, west? So you use heading for aircrafts and bearings for fixed things like bullseye and airports. So maps always use um, true north, okay? But the magnetic north it's different okay and it moves so sometimes there's a difference okay awax uses true north they give you bearing of 41 then in your instrument in your heart for example um you may see 35 so this is basically a uh, magnetic uh, declination okay So here you go to menu two to select your bullseye number, okay, between one to ten. Menu two, menu one has most of the functions that you normally need, and then menu two, there are others, but the two useful ones is L, um, are ILS and uh, bullseye. So a bit more about bullseye, it can be confusing. So when you say from something to from A to B, the bearing is at A, okay, not at B. So most uh, many people get it wrong. So like this one, um from b to o ownership that is your aircraft okay meaning you start drawing the true north rotation starting from bullseye okay so starting with the heart we have this number okay this number ignoring this for now this number it's from Bull's eye to your aircraft, right? Regardless of your symbol, your acquisition symbol, where is it pointing? Where are you moving the cursor? Basically, your the position, uh, from bull's eye to you. So you are here. Bull's eye is here. So, starting from here zero, go like nine degrees, okay, and twenty seven miles. Um. That is you, right? That's what it says. Nine with a range of 27. Now, then looking at the air to air radar, we have two more numbers, okay? That are dependent on this cursor or TDC or acquisition symbol. I guess in air to air, you call it acquisition symbol. But as you move this around, these numbers will change. This is basically saying from you the ownership to this acquisition symbol okay so you are here it's saying 140 for range of 40 right so from here 140 so zero go down 90 and come down here 140 for range of 40 so this is where the acquisition symbol is looking at on the map here obviously up in the air you can't really tell 
Now, then at the bottom, it's bullseye to this acquisition symbol, okay, at 97.31 range. So, bullseye coming here, 90, slightly past it, 97 for 31, all right? You always have a triangle, so these three um, always have some kind of bearing. So, second example. Here, 2157, bullseye to you. So, let's see, bullseye. And bullseye to ownership. Okay, so from 0, 21, okay, range 56. So, you are here, right, 21. Then this one, ownership to this symbol um you to from your aircraft to this symbol you are here okay 266 so you go like this almost 270 okay 260 this is the symbol and then lastly 351 okay from zero 270 almost 360 351 go up 51 all right so in real time you can't really picture it but for some serious case where you need to be very sure of these three parties then this is how you uh interpret okay the cursor the, or here TDC, what, what I call TDC, also on the at ground radar, okay, the cursor, again bullseye to the cursor, and then here teapot, um, bullseye to the cursor, or here they call it LOS, line of sight or something, okay. So, the last thing here is mark points. So on the heart, if you fly over something interesting, okay, and regardless of the direction, if you mark it, press on the UFC mark, a triangle will be shown, okay? So then this aircraft is flying this way, okay? We just marked and then a few seconds later, we passed it. So it's showing on the map. Okay, mark one. So after you fly around and say you want to come back here, you type in um, shift 5 for M, right? Always shift and then to get a number, uh, an alphabet. So we want M, mark one. So shift 5, 1. Okay, so then we press this one here and it will give us the steering to this mark point okay it will be shown on the command back here and then here it will show you the the range to that mark point okay on the heart so So the first way to create a mark point is on the UFC. So we press this mark. And now you see at the top of the UFC, we have, we have this mark point created and there is a triangle created here that we are going away from. See the triangle behind? That is the, um, the mark point created. So now if we want to go back to it, so assuming that the UFC is clear. 
okay we do mark point m1 okay. shift m one okay and then steer point one so now it's telling us to steer to here 179 okay that is the steer point towards the mark point one all right next second method is teapot okay so if this mpd teapot is uh in command is uh soi soy like the terminology used in the a10 so um once this is in command you can move the cursor around using the tdc um, and as you move this thing will move as well okay this thing you cannot move it when the heart is in command but when t part is in command uh, you can move it and you move it to search for something interesting to mark all right so by default this will be target or something else you have to keep pressing toggle toggle a few times until you see mark okay then once you place the cursor you press down the tdc and it will mark it and you'll see a mark point created okay so there's a way to retrieve it you have to change this to q and then type in the mark point here and then press this thing here and it will move the cursor automatically to that um, mark point so we are here in pause mode to give me time to explain another way to create mark points is to use the targeting part so first of all we want to move into the t part so m t part and then we adjust the contrast and the brightness and we want to make this left mpd soy by pressing this cursor switch left long okay now this tdc cursor here we can move it around okay and if you want to zoom in you use this acquisition switch forward all right so let's say we want to mark this before we mark it this thing here is tct we want to press from to q to mark all right then now the this tdc button here besides move being a cursor we can also press to mark all right mark one all right and on the map here you also see a triangle right above the base okay that's the mark point so let's say we move up and place on this power thing here all right and let's say we mark point 
okay mark 2 so if you want to move back you have to press change the mark to Q and then on the scratch pad shift 5 for M and then we have two mark points we want one all right then at the top here press one and see it moved us back to mark point one right this is how you retrieve it and also at the ground radar you can depending on the resolution um, how fine i guess you, you you need a high resolution map to see something in detail first right so this is just an example starting from map you press press and you until you get to mark then again moving the cursor over something interesting and pressing it and it will uh, I move away the cursor away just to to show this. So again, every time a mark point is created, you have a triangle, and then the number. Okay, M one. So this is the third way to create mark point. Thank you for watching. All right, target point using air to ground radar so we have air to ground radar here first thing we want to do is to make it soil by using this castle switch left long and now we see a sweep we now there is soil we can move this tdc around okay so imagine if you want to mark something okay i'm not going to switch to like high definition and wait for it to scan stuff like that just as an example if you want to mark it you use the tdc just like the teapot but before that again you have to switch this to mark all right then it's a matter of placing your cursor and press all right and now you see move away the cursor now you see the um, the triangle created here all right and that is your mark point